There's a ton of hype surrounding Marvel's upcoming movie, Black Panther. It's a movie I've been looking forward to seeing from the moment I saw Chadwick Boseman's portrayal of the character in the 2016 film, Captain America Civil War. The hype for Black Panther is more than just superhero fans looking forward to what we expect will be another entertaining Marvel movie, though. Many are excited to see this movie because it's a mainstream film featuring a 90% black cast done by a talented black director set in a fictional African country rich in resources and intellectual capital. So, even though it hasn't been publicly released yet, it's understandable that if you feel black people have been typecast as one-note criminals and athletes in most movies for you to be stoked about such a film. There seems to be a healthy consensus within the black community that this movie is going to be something positive for black culture. Well, I'm on board with all that. There's another angle I'd like to explore with this character's fanfare. It's an issue that I've heard about minority characters in general as lead roles in films and video games. You may recall the controversy of Michael B. Jordan cast as Johnny Blaze in the 2015 film fan or Fantastic Four. For me, as long as a specific ethnicity isn't critical to the character, I don't care about the ethnicity of the actor. For example, casting Daniel Day-Lewis to play Black Panther wouldn't make a lot of sense, even if everything else in the script stayed the same. He's a great actor, but it's pretty key to Black Panther's character that he be, you know, black. Otherwise, I'm more concerned about the acting and the story of the movies and video games than I am with the identity politics of those characters, and I think the world would be more enjoyable if everyone were. My willingness to accept actors of ethnicities divergent from their source character swings both ways. For the same reason I don't have a problem with Michael B. Jordan playing the Human Torch, I don't have a problem with Scarlett Johansson starring in the live-action anime film Ghost in the Shell. Unfortunately, many people, depending on what side of the overblown modern culture war on which they fall, are hypocritical about this from one direction or the other. Some argue that whitewashing in Hollywood is fine, but insist characters like the Human Torch or James Bond need to remain white, and if it were up to me, Idris Elba would have played James Bond a decade ago. Now, I've yet to hear a compelling reason for that hypocrisy, but I'll be happy to entertain the argument if you'd like to make one in the comments section. I'm interested in exploring the arguments I have heard from the other side of the hypocrisy. Those who argue that it's fine for a minority to play a conventionally majority character, yet the so-called whitewashing of minority characters is intrinsically evil. There's the pragmatic appeal that most roles in Hollywood are meant for white people already, so giving a minority ro role to a white actor is stealing away one of the few jobs that they could have had. I would counter that by the proportion, supply, and demand, it makes sense that there are more roles intended for the majority demographic. Likewise, because the majority of the actors competing for those roles also happen to belong to the majority, um, it seems to make sense and balance out. Meanwhile, a smaller number of minority roles exist for a smaller demographic of competing actors. A talented minority actor has far fewer opportunities, but also far less competition compared to an equally talented majority actor. Also, if you're not a hypocrite about it and you're okay with either demographic filling one another's roles, those minority actors actually gain far more opportunities than they potentially lose in the trade-off as there are, understandably, far more traditionally majority roles available to them. The more interesting and less objective arguments to push for more minority actors and characters in films and games even if doing so by supplanting their formerly white versions, is they give minorities, particularly minority children, representation in mainstream entertainment. It's understandable to consider the impact it may have on a black child, for example, if the exclusive representation he sees of himself in films and video games is a negative stereotype. It seems like the world is telling him something negative is expected of him on a surface level, even if deeper than that he knows better. After giving that notion some thought, though, I really don't think it's fair to place much, if any, of that burden on the entertainment industry. The greatest responsibility to provide young developing minds with positive examples of people who probably represent their demographics belongs to the parents or guardians of those children. The subliminal influence of societal expectations cannot compete with daily explicit examples and expectations set by those raising a child. Even if society does have a surplus of stereotypes that offer a negative impact, it's the people raising children who are responsible for knowing when and what to shield from and expose to their children. 
Well, if nothing else, for the sake of originality, I think the entertainment industry should defy tropes and stereotypes more often than they yield to them. It's still not the entertainment industry's job to provide positive models for children. They, like any other company, are primarily in business to make money. And at least in terms of entertainment content, I'm in favor of the free market. If movies like Black Panther make a ton of additional money by appealing to a large percentage of a minority, then good for them. But if another studio makes its profit by putting out predictable process schlock that the masses want to see, like the Transformers movies, then who am I to insist that they owe it to minorities to go out of their way to represent them better? The impact people have by raising a child is infinitely greater than all media combined. So if you want better representation for minority groups to have with heroes, start with parents, not Hollywood. Now, I also feel that society should offer kids positive, relatable characters in their TV shows, movies, and video games. If a child has the misfortune of being raised by a single, drug-addicted, alcoholic parent, that child should be able to open a comic book or play a video game and experience characters that he or she can admire and aspire toward. I think that all of society benefits from compelling fictional characters existing, characters that can inspire us and motivate us. My point of contention is the insistence that the child needs to look like the characters in order for them to properly represent them. Decades before superhero movies were anywhere near the mainstream genre they are today, Marvel's Blade movie came out, sporting a black kung fu daywalker vampire who spends the whole movie beating the shit out of evil white vampires. It cost $45 million to make and made over $131 million at the box office. It got two sequels, and you know what? I loved and still enjoy all of them today, despite their flaws. But how is that possible? As a chubby white middle school kid, I loved the character Blade. I admired his calm, confident demeanor, his snarky wit, and his graceful movements. I looked nothing like Wesley Snipes, but I admired his character. And it's an important part of my childhood. I could list several similar examples of characters that I somehow admired as a kid despite them being colors, genders, ages, and species that were all different from me. It's because they were compelling characters with cool stories and personalities. I never once felt separated from those characters because they were different or that I needed my heroes to look more like me in order to learn from them. A few years ago, I played my first Tomb Raider game, the 2013 game by Square Enix. There was a decent story, a well-developed character, and enjoyable gameplay. It never once bothered me that I was playing as a woman. I don't watch movies or play video games to see myself represented by other characters, and I never have. I can relate to those characters if they behave the way I would or in a way I would want to given their abilities and circumstances. So this pendulum swings both ways for me. You could view these sentiments as evidence that game publishers and film producers should be willing to write and design more minorities into their films. Most people go to a James Bond movie to see a suave, compelling protagonist engaged in international espionage against an eccentric villain. Almost none of them are going there exclusively to see a white man do those things. At the same time, don't insist that 007 is only meant for white people to enjoy. If your movies and games have quality characters, stories, cinematography, and gameplay, most consumers are happy to see any combination of ethnic and gender casting. For people unlike me, who do feel like they need to see people similar to themselves represented in film, A, I pity them, and B, I hope that their representatives do make it into their movies and games, but I feel that need will seriously impact the amount of things that they can enjoy. It saddens me to think what I would have missed out on if I couldn't have embraced characters like Blade, John Henry, and Daria. I also hope studios appealing to those consumers understand it's not enough for a character just to be a woman, a homosexual, or an ethnic minority. Those are surface-level traits that give very little for an audience to latch onto. For both society at large and the minorities desperate for representation, our artists should focus on giving us characters who are interesting enough for that representation to matter.